In iOS, we obviously need some way to store our data. And there are four general ways to do that. And I'm going to list them here in order of complexity. So the simplest one first is NSUser defaults. NSUser defaults are originally, were originally a concept to store your application settings or your defaults, if you will. So if I wanted a red background, then I would use NSUser defaults. However, if I want to store a large object, say of RSS feed items, then I would have too many user defaults to keep track of. So it is too simple for large data storage. The next one I can look at is a plist or a property list. And this is in all, most Apple uh, operating systems. And it's simply a list which does a little bit more than the previous class. So it groups together a bunch of default items or properties and puts them in a list. You can think of it as a simple text file. So if I was looking at a person, I would say their sweater was red, their head was round, they had no hair, and I would store, store all of those inside a P list. However, there's a much better option for storing large amounts of data, and that is to use the core data provided by Apple. This is the official way to store large data inside iOS devices. However, core data is pretty complicated to use, and I wouldn't recommend it for a beginner. If we look at this core data description, it tells us that it interfaces directly with SQLite. Now SQLite is a database that is a simplified version of the much wider MySQL and various other databases like that. So the final further option is for us to use a library to interact with SQLite. And that's where this GitHub library comes in, sqlite.swift. And it's a fantastic library and it allows you a hands-off approach to doing your database injection. So if you're going to store large data, then I would recommend you use some sort of SQLite library. There are many of them available if you use Swift or are still using Objective-C.